Hi and welcome to Ride, my name is John. You join us here again for another of our maintenance edits for RoadCyclingUK.com. Today we're going to touch on chain replacement. How and why and when should you change your chain? Um, how do you know? Is it worn out? Is it damaged? Um, it's good practice to change your chain on a regular basis. You'll get a lot more lifespan out of your other components, so i.e. chain rings and cassette if you change your chain on a regular basis. But first of all, how are we going to know if it needs changing? Well, there's various tools on the market uh, that will measure your chain, tell you how much stretch there is in it. They'll indicate to you, you know, whether it needs replacing or not. This particular model uh, fits into the chain links like so. And then there's a swing gauge, which can be read through a little window on here. Now this one indicates to me straight away that this chain is very worn. Uh, the swing gauge goes pretty much right the way through its arc of travel. So for sure we know this chain is ready for replacement. First thing we need to do obviously in order to replace the chain, I like to just remove the chain uh, from being in too much tension right now. We've got the chain on the big chain ring, higher up on the sprockets at the rear. So we're just gonna drop them down, drop it down to the small cog on the back, small chain ring. It gives us the least amount of tension in the system. It's a good opportunity to check the length of the chain at this point. Um, we're looking for the chain if it's the correct length when you're in the smallest sprocket and the smallest chain to just be bringing the derailleur into tension as it is here. So although this chain is worn and it is stretched, we know that it was a good length to start with because we're in the right ballpark there. Chain length will be governed by what gears you're running or what size chain rings and cassette. Obviously if you're running a bigger sprocket at the rear, you'll need more chain to run around those extra teeth, likewise on the chain rings. Um, so if we're happy that this is the right length, when we come to fit the new chain, we can offer it up against the old chain, check the lengths of the same then, uh, or we can go ahead and use this visual check method that we mentioned with the derailleur being in tension. So we'll go ahead and just pump out, uh, punch out the uh, chain pin on the Shimano system. It's worth being aware that uh, the chain pins that Shimano use are, are all different. So they look very, very similar. Uh, you've obviously got 9 speed systems, 10 speed systems, 11 speed systems now from, from these guys. Uh, the chain pins are the widths that correspond with the chains that go with those number of gears. So uh, don't mix them up, use the chain pin that comes with the chain you just bought. They are all different. These guys use uh, a, a non-removable pin to join their chains. So if you come in to remove a chain uh, and, it's not, and it's a chain that you're going to reuse, not a chain that you're going to remove and throw away, uh, don't break the chain on the on the non-removable chain pin. Find another chain pin within the. Oh, sorry, find another link within the chain to remove the pin from. Uh, Campagnolo, they use a similar system. They use a non-removable pin. Uh, it's a slightly different setup. Um, the Shimano one, as you'll see in a minute, has a pin that pushes through and then the back snaps off. Campagnolo use a pin that pushes through. The piece that snaps off is basically a guide piece. Uh, so on the Shimano one, you push it through and you snap the back off. Campagnolo's is similar, it has a guide piece, but rather than snapping it off, you actually pull it directly out squarely. That's quite tricky to do. Um, SRAM on the other hand, the other, the other big guys in the game, they use uh, something that they call a quick link or a speed link, power link perhaps. Um, and it varies whether you're running a 9 speed or 10 speed group set from those those chaps. Uh, the 9 speed speed link is removable with your bare hands. The 10 speed speed link is not really designed to be removed. So again, that's worth noting. Um, but we're on the Shimano system today, so let's concern ourselves with that. We've got the old chain off. We're gonna grab a new chain. Again, certain chains are interchangeable between manufacturers. It's wise if you can try and use all the manufacturer's own components. So we've got a 105 group set from these guys. We're going to use a 105 chain. Prevents any snarl ups down the line. So they use a directional chain as well. So one of the reasons that we have such nice crisp gear shifting nowadays is because a lot of the components are designed with each other in mind. So. Uh, the profiling on the teeth on the cassette, the profiling and the ramps, shifting ramps on the chain rings are all designed to coincide with the shape and the direction of the run of the chain. So Shimano's chains have, have logos printed on the outside. So it says Shimano on certain links. On the inside there's nothing, they're just plain. So the logos go outside. I'm 
going to drop the chain through, put it on the smallest sprocket at the back, run it through the derailleur at the front, drape it over the small chain ring, and then run it through the derailleur. So one common mistake we see here in the workshop is inside the derailleur here, between the two jockey wheels, there's a small tab. And if you run the chain on the wrong side of this tab, i.e. over the top of it, it'll make a real noise, you'll hear it, it'll affect the shifting and it'll certainly wear everything a lot quicker. Um, so just be mindful that this chain goes behind that plate. So around that bottom jockey wheel, bring the two ends together and we're going to have a look at the length of the chain. So you can see if we joined that chain there now, it would hang loose like that. If we take too many links out, you'll see the derailleur comes into too much tension. So we're looking for, remember that kind of tension where the chain just comes into play. Uh, so the derailleur just comes into play. So it'll be that link there. So we can hold on to that. Get our chain tool again. Pop the chain in. Now it's worth noticing here that there's, a, there's two slots on the chain tool on this particular model anyway. The slot at the front of the chain tool is designed for pushing the pin out. The slot further back is designed to spread the links. If you get a tight link in the chain, um, it will just open the links up very slightly. It won't push the link, it won't push the pin through and out the other side. So we do want to push the pin through. So we're going to use the slot at the front of the chain tool. Go ahead and turn that through. Now this pin can come all the way out. It's not a problem. We're not going to be using that. Get rid of the piece that we don't need. Again, just double check the length. The length looks good. We've got a male and a female end. We'll grab Shimano's little chain pin. These are all different as well. So again, if you're using a nine speed system from Shimano, a 10 speed or a new 11 speed, these pins are all different widths. The chains are different widths for the different numbers of gears. The pins are the same, so they're not interchangeable. Make sure you use the pin that comes with the chain. Drop the chain off of the small chain ring. Just gives you a bit of slack to work with. Bring the two ends together. Take the pin. The rounder end goes through first. That's the guide part. The whole thing will hold itself together. Take your chain tool again. Place it in the guide slot. Gently ease it through. You'll feel it's tight to start with. It'll go slack in the middle and then it'll go tight again at the end, just as it seats into place. So that's the pin in place. Now you see the guide piece is still sticking through here. Need to break that off, obviously. So a decent set of pliers, good grip, and gentle tug, and it comes away. Just check that that hasn't left you with a link that's stiff. If it does, we can go back and use that spreader link on the chain tool to open it up just slightly, or even a small amount of gentle persuasion sideways. This one's gone fine. Pop the chain back on the chain ring. Again, just checking the length. And then we can go ahead and check the function. And that's it, chain replacement.